Hello. Thank you for joining. And I'm assuming that the title having to do with problem solving is probably why you're here. We all have problems. Some of them seem minor or small, but we all have those problems that seem very, very large and uh, almost impossible for us to solve. They consume our energies, our thinking. Uh, sometimes they keep us from sleeping and all of those kinds of things. And so I don't know what your problem is when I use a title like this or when I bring up problems, but you know what your problem is and the one that you would most like to solve. And we're going to learn something from this little guy right here about how to solve our problems. Now, your problem may be uh, monetary. It may have something to do with your work. It may be relational. I don't know. But it might seem impossible to you. And that's where our friend here comes in. You see, for the longest time, it was sort of a common knowledge or folk wisdom, whatever you want to call it, that bumblebees aren't supposed to be able to fly. And so I did a little bit of research on that. And what I found out was a mixed set of opinions. You can Google that thing for yourself. But basically, there was a time when our best knowledge or our best um, calculating, uh, whatever you want to call it, on aerodynamics told us that the bumblebee wasn't supposed to be able to fly. Yet we all know that he flies. So, you know, it was a little bit of a, of a learning curve. And so you'll see some mixed messages there if you look that up, but that's really not the point. Um, that conception is out there, that idea. And many times we carry a similar misconception about solving our biggest problem. And years ago, I heard an illustration that has stuck in my mind and um, it seems that a young boy had something he wanted to go outside and do. He wanted to build something and he thought he could do it. And he, you know, tinkered around with whatever it was he was trying to build. And he worked and he worked and he worked and he finally got very frustrated. And he just sort of, you know, threw his hands up in the air and, and gave up. And he went in the house, uh, you know, very distraught, uh, probably a little tearful and that sort of thing. And of course, when he came in, his dad, being a you know wise father, he said, you know, what's the matter? And the kid said, Dad, I can't do it. I've done everything and I just can't do it. And the dad said, well, you haven't done everything. And the kid said, I did do everything, everything I knew. And the dad says, no, you didn't do everything. You didn't ask me to help. Now, that is an incredible lesson because, you see, there is a limit to what each of us can do. And one of the things that is very, very helpful to remember is that we can help each other. We can work to solve our problems. I could help you. You could help me. We could help each other. We could help other people. We can do all of that. However, that pales in comparison to asking our Father to help us. And you see, with man, there are impossibilities. But with God, all things are possible. And then here we go to this impossible thing again. But you say, well, prayer can't really be a thing. You know, asking God to help, uh, that's just not real. I don't think that's real. I, I don't understand how that can be real. Well, just like we don't understand, or for a long time, people did not understand how that bumblebee could fly, didn't change the fact that the bumblebee went from flower to flower. <laughs> whether we thought it was possible or not, it was. And you see, whether we think asking our father for help is possible or not, it is. And so, we learn in the New Testament that we are to ask, to seek, and to knock. Jesus said that in the Sermon on the Mount. 
we learn in the New Testament that sometimes we don't have because we don't ask. So I don't have to understand how the asking works. I just need to ask. Now that seems very, very simple, but it's very profound. And what I have to do in my asking is believe that God has instructed me to pray. Believe that he's instructed me to ask him. And then let him answer in the way that he knows is best. Now, that is a step of faith. And that is exactly what the scripture also teaches us from the book of Hebrews. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So I have to ask him to help me with what I think is my biggest problem. Now, as I said, that problem may be monetary, it may be work, it may be relational, maybe my family, could be any number of things. But is that, whatever is in your mind right now, is that the biggest problem that any of us have? Well, I will submit to you that there are two kinds of people. Some of them understand that there is a problem greater than any of the ones I've named. Those are the ones who understand that the greatest problem in the world, the most severe consequences, is not having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are those people who have that, and there are those people who do not. So if you are one of the ones that has that relationship, then our instruction is to ask the Father to seek his kingdom, and he will add all these other things to us, our worldly concerns, the affairs of life, all of that. If I don't have that relationship with him, then here's the good news. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that we can have a relationship with him because as you well know, or may have seen on a football poster or whatever, you know, in the stands, John 3, 16, it's the gospel in a nutshell. God so loved the world, meaning God so loved you that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him, there's that matter of faith, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That gift can be yours today. You can pray to the Father for your biggest problem, which is that. And we can all ask him for the affairs of life, for his wisdom, for his supply, and be like that child who understands that I'm limited, but my Father can do anything. I hope that helps you. I hope that challenges you. And uh, if it does, you can see the uh, information in the video description or reach out to the person that may have sent you a link to this video. And uh, we'd love to uh, hear some feedback from you and follow up and answer any questions you may have. And to that end, I hope Mr. Bumblebee has helped you get a little bit of good perspective on whatever your problem is today. Thanks. See you later.